cord is gone. I want to help you in any way that um, I can. That's why I'm here. Not really necessarily. I'm going to. I'm going to talk about a little bit about my book, but that's maybe to titillate you, to help and inspire you. Okay. So that's my intention. All right. First of all, I'm Karen Condation. I wrote a book called The Whip. It's a historical novel. Um, kind of magical things have happened to it. Um, I'm going to tell you, I think that if you have, this is just me now, okay? If you have a strong intention under your creative work, that you're there to help others, to inspire, and to transform others through your work, that magical things happen to you and your book and any work that you do. I believe, I believe that because this book has taught me that. Um, I'll talk later about why I wrote it and how I wrote it and those things. What I'm going to talk about now is just simply that the magical things that happened were, because I had that intention, I finished the book after six years and 27 drafts, um, and I said to myself, three days after I had finished it, oh God, now I have to do the dreaded proposal. You know, that proposal that is almost harder than writing the book, because in a couple of pages, you have to entice the publisher, or whoever is reading it, the agent, um, to read the book. And if they're not interested in your proposal, they won't read your book. It gets thrown on, you know, given to the library. Um, and so I started getting books, I started hot getting from Amazon books on proposals. Four days after the book was completed, I got an email from a, uh, somebody I hadn't heard from in 30 years, from Transylvania. <laughs> and he had taken photographs of me and Tennessee Williams. Uh, Tennessee Williams came to see this performance that I did of Rose Satu, and we became friends out of that. And he had taken all these photographs. And he got hold of my email, and he said, listen, I, I, I'm doing a cover I need to get this cover of a Tennessee Williams photograph I took of you and him. Some publisher wants it for a centennial book on Tennessee Williams. Would you contact him for me? Uh, because I'm in Transylvania. And so I did my good deed. And meanwhile, the publisher said, oh, and who are you and what do you do? And I told him. And I told him, I just finished this book, what's it about? I told him, oh, why don't you send me a couple chapters, he said. Sounds very interesting. So I did. Two weeks later, he called me and he said, I'd like to see the whole book. And I did. And about a week later, he said, we'll buy the book. It's a little, and so I didn't know, it's a little boutique publishing house in the East. I didn't know anything about him. So I had a friend who was with CAA. And I contacted, through him, I, I got to an agent at CAA and asked him about this person. He said, listen, this is interesting. He said, listen, go with this publishing house. He said, because if you go with a big one and you are a fiction writer, if your book doesn't sell in the first two or three weeks or months, they will take it off the shelf. A little publishing house will keep it there forever, trying to get their money back. Okay, so I signed with this guy. He published the book. It started to do very well. I started magically meeting people. And I'm not going to go into the... But people who, who fell in love with the book, who wanted to assist... So, I'm going to quickly say that from the, the, the publishing of the book to it becoming an audio book, and that was a, that, you know, you can't get an audio book made until you've sold at least 5,000 books, which we have. Mm -hmm. And 
It magically got on the cover, I have no idea, of Publishers Weekly, which meant that it got onto the, into a lot of libraries. Yeah. And then suddenly, last Friday, I got a letter. I had, the book had won the best historical novel for the U.S. News Book, book Contest. I'm, on, I'm not bragging. I'm only telling you that because of this intention that I have, but I'm, I just need you to take what I'm trying to say, which is find the intention of your writing for others, and all will be taken care of for you. And the best time to write in a strange way, as and actors know this too, that you do your best work when you're tired, because you don't push and you don't try to make anything happen. You just kind of sit there and... A, the biggest secret I can give you, and how I got through a lot of my stuff periods, was that I would just allow myself to write badly. Sit down in front of the computer or yellow legal pad or whatever it is you do do, and just say to yourself, I'm now going to write this love scene. I'm going to write it as badly as I can, with all the horrible adjectives and no punctuation and terrible spelling, and I'm just going to you know, excuse me, vomit it out. And you know that some of my best work in the kernel, in the nut of all of that, came out of that. Because I was free. And I wasn't, you know, oh, I can't fucking think of the adjective. And uh, that's terrible punctuation. And you stop yourself. That's a great way to stop yourself from writing. Larry McBurtry is a great writer. And he wrote Lonesome Dove. And anyway. He writes very short chapters, and I thought, this is, I love this. Mm -hmm. And so it was very hard to do. It's mm -hmm. not like you can just go, okay, I'm going to write short. Because you have to Condense. telescope things. But what happens is one, once you get it going, it's like popcorn. It's like, you know, eating, it's like eating popcorn because suddenly you're reading two chapters, two pages, and you're going, oh, wait a minute, I can read one more. And then you read another one and another one. And <laughs> And it also speeds the book. There's a rhythm to the book that's very fast. Mm. So that's a secret that I learned from Mr. McBurtry. Now, another thing, uh, just so you all know, um, the genre of Western, don't ever write a Western. Um, because there's 12 people in the world that will buy it. Uh, the, reason, the reason why, uh, mostly men, you know, uh, the reason what this is, book is this a whole spiritual book? Can you believe that? Just one quick thing. Underneath it is the river that runs through the book is the quest this question I'm going to ask you. If someone destroyed everything horribly in your life and everyone that you love in your life, could you forgive them? And if you couldn't, how far would you go? That's what the book is about, ultimately. It just happens to be in the Old West.